Once Around, Piazzi's Flying Star. So there's a star located in the constellation of Cygnus the Swan, very visible in the summer, uh, certainly from where I am. 61 Cygni, Piazzi's Flying Star. A very good target, actually, with binoculars. You can find it. It's relatively bright and will show something rather interesting. Now, it's located inside the little red circle there on the star map, but not shown on very many ancient star maps because it really isn't very bright at all. But what's interesting about it is that it is a binary star pair of K-type dwarf stars, and they each have a magnitude on the bounds of visibility, depending on how good your skies are, 5.2 and 6.05, so just about visible. Um, but of course, the combined light brings them up a little bit, uh, and you see them with the naked eye, of course, as a single star. They orbit round each other in 659 years, so that's quite a wide orbit. Now, what attracted people's attention to this in the first place was the discovery by Giuseppe Piazzi in 1792 that the star was moving from year to year in its position across the sky. And we've got a little zoomed in animation of, in fact, the pair of stars visible as a, a binary here progressing against the background of stars, the so-called proper motion. What Piazzi did was compared the position he saw with the position from earlier records spanning a period of 40 years, giving him a long enough baseline to be sure that he could uh, prove that the stars had moved. Um, but it took him a long time before he was confident enough, another 12 years, in fact, before he uh, published the value for the mo motion rather than just saying he thought it had changed and showed that his observations were uh, real. And he gave it the name, the flying star, hence Piazzi's flying star. Now, you may remember Piazzi was also the guy that discovered the asteroid series, uh, the first uh, asteroid belt object, now a dwarf planet. Um, and that's really what people tend to remember him for. But uh, I think this is one of his uh, great discoveries as well. So here's another animation closer in showing the change in position of the two stars against the background. And that really, when you see that the position is changing, it's either because the star is going very rapidly or because it's very nearby and therefore the parallax gives you uh, this impression of speed. So Piazzi realized that this would be well worth the attempt of astronomers measuring the distance using the parallax method, using the Earth's orbit as a baseline for a piece of trigonometry, making a long, thin triangle to the position of the star over the period of a full orbit, one year, you get a two AU long, two astronomical units, two times 150 million kilometers, so 300 uh, for your triangle. And it was able to show that uh, it was about 11.4 light years away. Well, um, in 1838, Bessel came along and said, actually, it's a little bit closer, 10.4 light years. So definitely in the sun's neighborhood. And because he was the first one to get a very good reference for the distance, it's sometimes called Bessel's star as well. So the two components, widely separated, 28 arc seconds, so easily separable with amateur level equipment. And uh, the orbit goes around 659 years, as I said, in a rather elliptical pattern uh, from 44 to 124 astronomical units. But for a long time, it was really unknown if these were uh, just a couple of stars passing by each other at this rather large distance, uh, many times larger than the orbit of Neptune, of course, uh, or whether it was a gravitationally bound system. But we now know that it is. So this is definitely a pair of stars, roughly equal in size, actually, and orbiting around their common center of mass. 
So the two stars themselves, they're older than the sun at about six billion years. That in itself is an interesting point from the uh, perspective of looking for uh, highly evolved systems with uh, planets. And uh, if you had some habitable planets here, they would have had a a billion and a half years of head start on the uh, Earth, and that would be interesting in its own right. So the two stars, well, the A star, 70% the mass of the Sun, and the B star, slightly smaller at 63, both in that 60 to 90% of the Sun's mass that gives you a K-type orange dwarf star. And these orange dwarf stars are very, very interesting because of their very long lifetimes. So that six billion years is really nothing. These guys are going to live maybe getting on to 100 billion years in total. So very long, stable star systems. And that's a perfect place to really uh, base your civilization if you happen to have one. Temperatures, well, in the 4000s, 4398 and 4175 Kelvin, classic orange dwarf stars. Now, it was reported by Benjamin Boss in 1911 that the uh, 61 Cygni Piazzi's flying star is part of a group of 26 stars, all with a fairly common path around the galaxy, all suggesting that these were formed together in some uh, ancient star cluster, and they're beginning to break up. We've got uh, 26 of them all together, some of the prominent members, Beta Columbi, Pi, Mensai, 14 Tauri, 68 Virginis. Um, so nothing that we've ever heard of, really, but uh, nevertheless bright enough to track down. And doing roughly the same speed, 110 kilometers per second relative to the sun. But there's a bit bit of a spread there. It's actually from 104 to 115. And so they're gradually going to disperse um, perturbations and interactions with other stellar systems and gas clouds are going to pull them off course and break them up. Um, as time goes on. But it's interesting that they're still together after about 6 billion years. So, 61 Cygni planets. Well, this has been a popular sport for many years of claiming to find planets. And it goes all the way back to 1942 with Stand and Peter van der Kamp, who claimed to have tracked the motion of the star against the background, the so-called astrometry method, and spotted a perturbation in the path, which they claimed had a period of 4.8 years, suggesting a 16 mass, uh, uh, sixteen Jupiter mass planet orbiting at 2.4 astronomical units, giving that perturbation. Now, as has been uh, happened a number of times with such claims, it's really the experimental error that's dominating here and that such a planet did not exist. About 35 years later, Soviet astronomers claimed the existence of three planets, and that's not been confirmed either. And bringing it up to date, Gaia in 2018 spotted significant anomalies, quote unquote, in the path suggesting some possible planets around the B star. But we're still not there yet. We're still not actually able to show one way or the other whether there are planets orbiting these uh, pair of K-type orange dwarf stars. And this puts it as a tier one target for NASA investigations looking for Earth-like planets. Now, Earth-like planets planets of similar mass to the Earth, it would be excellent if they were within the habitable zone, and that exists around each of the two stars separately. Um, roughly the same, they're about the same mass. The A star is a little bit more massive and a little bit brighter, so the habitable zone is from 0.26 to 0.58 of an AU and slightly closer for the B star, but not very much. And so it'd be fascinating to find some planets orbiting around Piazzi's flying star. And with that, I'll bring this short video to an end. I hope you have get the chance to go out and have a look and see if you can locate this interesting binary star system. Thanks very much. Bye now.